Madam Clerk. Yes, Mayor. Board of Commissioners, public meeting Wednesday, July 5th, 2017. The time is now 745. Pursuant to the requirements of the Open Public Meeting Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, notice of this meeting was published in December 1st, 2016, issues of the Nutley Sun and the Herald News, and the December 2nd, 2016, issue of the Star Ledger. A copy of this notice has been posted on the Nutley Town Hall Bulletin Board, and a copy is on file in the Municipal Clerk's Office. Commissioner Rogers? Here. Commissioner Tucci? Here. Commissioner Evans? Here. Commissioner Petrago? Here. Mayor Scarpelli? Here. All present, Mayor. Communications? Uh, yes, Mayor. Holy Family Church has submitted an application for a social affair permit for their Italian festival event, which will be held on Thursday, September 21st, 2017, through Sunday, September 24th, uh, 2017. The application has been re reviewed and approved by the Chief of Police. Any Move motion? It. Second. Was that you, Commissioner? Second. Okay. Commissioner Rogers? Aye. Commissioner Tucci? Aye. Commissioner Evans? Aye. Commissioner Petraco? Aye. Mayor Scarpelli? Aye. And that's it for communications. Bills? Yes, Mayor. Bill is for Wednesday, July 5th, 2017, Public Affairs, $93,993.43. Revenue and finance, $2,326,004.18. Public safety, $34,579.60. Public works, $369,686.72. Parks and public property, $656,678.08. Total payroll, $827,643.49 for a grand total of $4,308,585.50. Motion, please. Move the bills. Second. Commissioner Rogers. Aye. Commissioner Tucci. Aye. Commissioner Evans. Aye. Commissioner Petraco. Aye. Mayor Scarpelli. Aye. And that's it for bills, Mayor. A public comment uh, on agenda items only. Madam Clerk. All persons addressing the Board of Commissioners regarding community concerns should approach the microphone and provide their name and address for the record. Unless further time is granted, the Board. Uh, granted by the board, each person shall limit their address to three minutes. All remarks to the board and its individual members must be addressed to the mayor. The mayor may defer citizens' comments to the appropriate member of the board. Dialogue between citizens and others addressing the board shall be allowed unless the mayor or presiding officer or the majority of the membership of the board shall determine that the interests of the quorum and or the expeditious conduct of municipal business are ad adversely affected by such dialogue. Or more 462 Chestnut Street. Mr. Scarpelli, I have a few questions. Um, on Mr. Petraco for the introduction for the ordinance, it's um, 18, 19, and 20 calendar years. Is there a reason we're doing like two, three years out? Usually it, an ordinance would be for one year. You're talking about the salary ordinance? Yes. It's a four-year it contract. Like, it's a four-year contract. No, so, it's a, I understand it's a four-year contract, but if you did 18 now, like next year, nobody sees this contract until the next time it comes up because you're doing all the ordinances in one time. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, that's that's how we've always done it here. Um, not to revisit, because once the contract is signed and the memorandum of agreement is signed, really, the town's obligated to pay the contract, so. No, no, it's, I'm not disputing that fact. I was just, my only concern was that if it comes up again for 19, it shouldn't be introduced so everybody else at least has awareness that you're going into the second year of the contract, the third year of the contract? I mean, I, it, it sounds trivial, but you're doing everything once, settle it, done, and you bury the contract for four years. That's huh. my only concern. There's no burying in the contract. I mean, the contract comes up every year, but I hear your point, and this is how it's been done in Nutley for a long, long time. I mean, I have no, I don't really have an objection to doing it yearly or the way we've been doing it. I mean. I don't. I don't have a problem reading one year at a time if that's good with everybody. Listen, I, I'm good I, with that. I think it's been done this way in the past, and there's there's no reason not to do it. Mr. Parrish, you have any reason that we shouldn't do it? Absolutely 
There's no reason not to do it. The contract doesn't get carried. The contract's a losing matter of public record. Um, if this is the way that this municipality uh, is traditionally done, if there's no reason not to continue to do it that way, by the same token, adopting the new salary limits every year is not a problem either. So, either way, but if this is the way you've always done it, there's no reason not to continue that. Actually, Mayor, if I might add, Mr. Moore, all, all of the contracts are done this way, whether it's the FMVA contract, the SOA contract, the Teamsters contract, because in effect, if you only approve one year of a salary increase, what you have is a one-year contract. If that's the but, on one year, this is a four, wait, I believe this is a four-year contract. It, it's, it, it seems like a trivial matter. But it seems like you're going to settle the whole thing one shot, it's over with, and nobody gets to see it until the next contract comes uh, it's, up. It, it's, a, it's a public document, you know, it's always available. But you know it, it's a public document because you see it on a piece of paper. A year from now, you won't know about it. <laughs> Mr. Moore, I'm sure you're very resourceful. You would find it. <laughs> <laughs> and the professional service, uh, is there a reason? This was given out of town, not until Nutley Service Board. Was there a reason for that? Excuse Other, me? The professional service contract that's being awarded. For who? Given the health care, behavioral, behavioral health care. I was just curious, is there a reason that this wasn't awarded to Nutley Family Services? Was that part of their... Capabilities. I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to answer for Commissioner Rogers. I'll let him answer. Mr. Moore, this resolution ought to be music to your ears. And I'm glad you asked the question tonight. And Mike, Mike, I see you over there. This is going to be music to your ears. There have been, as you know, yourself and others have consistently come to these meetings, and have asked us to cut spending. You have asked us to be a little bit smarter in the services that we have rendered to the people of Nutley. And I went through my budget. And I had to find ways to cut spending. After all, this is, and I say this with all sincerity, this is what the taxpayers have been asking, night after night after night. So I went through my budget, and I did a little research. And I found out that we can get the same services that we were getting from the Nutley Family Service Bureau, who, by the way, have done an outstanding job over all these years, and in fact expand those services at a cost of 15000 whereas we were providing funding to the Nutley Family Service Bureau, 65000 Look at that savings. Look at that savings in tax dollars. So with the research we did with the help of Commissioner Tucci and with the help of Commissioner Petraco, because they're both involved in, in various ways, Commissioner Petraco with the HOPE Committee, with regard to drug rehabilitation, and Commissioner, Commissioner Tucci, who has been very, very helpful in providing the resources that the county already had, we were able to develop a partnership with the county where we're going to have a representative from the county mental health clinic in the health department dealing with a lot of the issues that are being dealt with now with regard to the services provided by Nutley Family Service, but with the expansion of providing post-traumatic stress disorder counseling for our veterans and our first responders. Think about that. 65,000 versus 15,000, this is exactly what the taxpayers want. And believe me, this was not an easy decision. This was a difficult decision because we have a long-standing, wonderful relationship with the Nutley Family Service Bureau. But they're not a government agency. They're a nonprofit organization. We've had a partnership for years, but you know what? I had to do what was right on behalf of the taxpayers, especially those of you who have come here for a very long time asking for things like this to be done. I commend you for that. Thank you. Is it, does Mr. Tucci, do you have a conflict on this one? I, I believe your name's on the website. As being no, I do not. I, I, if you go back, Mr. Moore, and you can research it, I recuse myself every time this vote comes up. I'm not involved in negotiations. Um, but Commissioner Rogers does that with the professionals over at Northwest. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Anybody else want to address the board on agenda items only? Mike Montreal, 133 High Street. I want to understand what Rory over here was trying to allude to is these new contracts that come up every year, you say once a year, right? What do I am? Do they obviously include wage increases, am I correct? I didn't hear you, Michael. I'm sorry, guys. Um, 
these new contracts that are done every year, every year they include wage increases, am I correct? Yes. Okay. What I'm trying to get at is, what I think he was trying to get at is, it gets to a point where we cannot afford these wage increases anymore. See, people like me who live in this town and a lot of people who moved out who work in the private sector, we have learned to survive and hold on to our homes in this town to cap, control, and reduce our own life spending. Trust me, I'm not getting wage increases at my job because I'm a performance-based salary employee. So if we're willing to do that, maybe your side should learn to do that. And plus, the percentage of people right, who work right. in this town are less than 6% of the working population in this town. I don't, I, don't think, I don't think tonight we're here to discuss what the police contract was. We, I'm talking about all contracts. I'm not no, picking on the police. But I'm just saying all of them. Okay. Man, those speakers are working good here tonight. Um, anyway, what we were able to do with the PBA contract this year was we were, back, we were able to get back longevity, which was a, a substantial amount of money. And what police and fire, it's a negotiation, and you try to come to a settlement agreement before you go out to arbitration. So it wasn't like we just gave away the taxpayers' money. This was a well thought out, and we did consult our professionals because we didn't want to go to arbitration and have hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal fees after that and have them get the same award that we get, gave them. So the longevity piece was a big piece for us to get back. Also, a lot of towns have been freezing the health benefit contribution also. And not only we were able to still have that in our contract, so whatever the state mandates are, if it goes up, we'll get money back on that. So it's not a quite, these. These when you come up to the mic and you say it so simply, like these contracts are going up and all that stuff, I just want you to know that police and fire, when we can't come to an agreement, then it goes to binding arbitration, and I've been through that process before. And traditionally, when, you, when we went to binding arbitration, an arbitrator would come in here and just award 4% across the board for four years. So I think we did quite well. I think, I think that the town walked away from the table a little unhappy. I think the PBA walked away from the table a little unhappy, and that tells me that it wasn't a windfall for any side, but it was something that was fair. Well, I was watching on Eyes on Nutley, and the last time another person came up to this to the table, right, um, to, the, to the microphone, well, actually the gentleman behind me, he mentioned a gentleman named Mr. Cafone. He was making 180k a year. It's really 177,523 that he made last year. I'm just when I saw that, I, like I said, oh my Mr. god, Mr. I didn't Mr. know Mr. Jones, that much. Stardria, <laughs> only on agenda items. You're going off the agenda items right now. Okay. All right. There's still gonna be public comment after all this because there's some. There's another reason why I came. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else like to address the board of commissioners on agenda items only? Board of Commissioner announcements, commissioners? Um, I have an announcement. We have received notification um, of a preliminary award uh, in the amount of, um, it's a combination loan and grant in the amount of $350,115 uh, to replace the existing synthetic turf at Father Glotzbach Park. And the way that breaks down, it's $262,586 in a grant and $87,529 in a loan. Now that doesn't mean that that's going to be the cost of that synthetic turf replacement, but that's the amount of money we have to work with, which should be more than enough to do that. So we haven't received the actual award documents yet, but we were in fact notified that they're on their way. Thank you, Mayor. Congratulations. Thank you. Mr. Evans? Mayor, uh, several uh, residents have asked why we haven't uh, finalized the budget for 2017, um, and I guess because of the focus on the state budget over the last several days. Uh, just, to, just to be clear, we cannot uh, finalize our 2017 budget until we receive notification from the Division of Local Governmental Services, uh, DCA, on the award of our uh, temporary transitional aid uh, and our total, the total package of our aid for this year. 
Uh, once that becomes known and finalized, we should then be able to move on the adoption of our budget. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner? Yeah, Commissioner. Yeah, well, uh, one more thing with regards to the uh, resolution. Uh, last week or the week before that, the Township of Nutley at the Parks and Recreation Department hosted a workshop, I would say, of multiple, mu multiple health professionals throughout the county. Mm -hmm. I was astounded over what was out there and what we as a township are now able to partnership with. I could tell you, and I want to emphasize this, that M Commissioner Tucci's involvement was pretty simple. He was a resource. No conflict at all. He was a resource. And what he put together in that county that I was unaware of, uh, I think is astounding. And we're probably going to be the first town uh, in the state partnering with a county that will have, I, I think they said, a model program for veterans. That's, mm -hmm. uh, that's something to be proud of. Not only, you know, the reduction in cost, but it's really something to be proud of that we are on a journey that's developing uh, shared services and partnerships with uh, uh, another level of government. And we're going to find a lot of people down the road are going to benefit from this. So I, I thought it was important to let you know that we had that, that meeting. There were 12, 15 agencies, and pretty much everybody was excited about what Nutley's doing. Just wanted to uh, let you know about that. Seven in the state, yes. And I, and I know, Mayor, you were there. I was remiss in mentioning that. Because I know you have concerns about that area of uh, our society, too. Thank you for being there. It, mayor, if I might just make one last comment. The mayor alluded to the fact that we are one of seven agencies in the state of New Jersey. There are only eight states in the entire United States that were offered the ability to, to participate in this demonstration program. And I'd like to thank the mayor and his other role as the county mental health administrator for, for his support, all right, and for attending that evening. It was a, it was a wonderful evening. The services that, that will be offered are, have never been offered before in the areas that the mayor mentioned. It's, it's a behavioral uh, stop. It's a mental health stop. It's an addiction stop, all right. And for the first time, we're incorporating our veterans and our first responders who really had to go through the VA with spotty at, at best service that they were afforded. So now, like, like it's been said, it's one-stop shopping and it's something that we're very excited about and I think it's something that's wonderful for the Township of Nutley. So, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Any other commissioner announcements? I just want to thank uh, my fellow commissioners for all their support and help in uh, running the Fourth of July festivities. We had a great night. It was a, beautiful night uh, out there uh, for uh, the community to come together and a really nice fireworks display. So uh, thank you all for your help. Ordinance introductions. I'll uh, read this on behalf of the Board of Commissioners. Ordinance number 3361, an ordinance to amend an ordinance codified in the code of the Township of Nutley Chapter 410 entitled Historic Preservation. I move this ordinance be passed to a second reading and advertised in the Nutley Sun together with the notice required by law and that further consideration of said ordinance for final passage by the Board of Commissioners be held at its second reading on August 1st, 2017 to move the ordinance. Second. Commissioner Rogers. Aye. Commissioner Tucci. Uh, before I vote, I'd just like to commend um, 
not only the mayor for his participation this and the commissioners but also our our township attorney uh, Alan Jenna Tempo who drafted several iterations of this and got to the point where we are now where I believe it's acceptable to everyone the funding in fact has has been checked there are there are requirements uh, that that need to be met and applications made to the governing body uh, and in conjunction with the planning board uh, we will hopefully preserve some of our wonderful homes in the township. I proudly vote aye. Commissioner Evans? Aye. Commissioner Petraco? Aye. Mayor Scarpelli? Aye. Ordinance number 3362, ordinance providing for reconstruction of the roadway on Harrison Street, Section 3, in the township of Nutley in the county of Essex, New Jersey, appropriating $252,504 from a grant monies received from the New Jersey Department of Transportation for the cost thereof. Um, I move that this ordinance be passed to a second reading advertised in Nutley Sun together with the notice required by law and that further consideration of said ordinance for final passage by the Board of Commissioners to be held in its sec on its second reading on August 1st, 2017. I move the ordinance. Second. Commissioner Rogers? Aye. Commissioner Tucci? Aye. Commissioner Evans? Aye. Commissioner Petraco? Aye. Mayor Scarpelli? Aye. Commissioner Petraco? Yes. Okay, I have um, an introduction for ordinance number 3363, an ordinance to be amend, to amend an ordinance codified in the code of the Township of Notley, section 2 of chapter 228, entitled Parking Time Limited to Add to the Location Set Forth Thereon. Um, this introduction of ordinance is for Highfield Lane and Conduit, and we're going to try something different. I know a lot of people have been coming to the meetings with um, complaints about commuter parking. So we're gonna try, and they wanted us to go to a decal system so they could still park in front of their house. So we're gonna try doing this ordinance from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. and try to um, discourage people to park there, but also have the residents to be able to park in front of their house after 10 a.m. So um, this is kind of a little pilot program. It's something new that we're hoping that'll catch on if it works on that street then a lot of the two-hour park time limit parking all over town will start um, changing it to 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. as well so with that being said I move that this ordinance be passed to a second reading and advertising that we sent together with the notice required by law and that further consideration of said ordinance for final passage by the Board of Commissioners to be held at a second reading on August 1st I move the ordinance second Commissioner Rogers? Aye. Commissioner Tucci? Aye. Commissioner Evans? Aye. Commissioner Petraco? Aye. Mayor Scarpelli? Aye. Okay. Ordinance number 3364, in order to fix the salaries of certain officers and employees of the Township of Nutley County of Essex State in New Jersey, effective January 1st, 2017. I move that this ordinance be passed to a second reading and advertised in the Nutley Sun together with the notice required by law and further consideration of said ordinance for final passage by the Board of Commissioners to be held at second reading on August 1st. I move the ordinance. Second. Commissioner Rogers? Aye. Commissioner Tucci? Aye. Commissioner Evans? Aye. Commissioner Petraco? Aye. Mayor Scarpelli? Aye. Ordinance number 3365, an ordinance fixed the salaries of certain officers and employees of the Township of Nully County of the State of New Jersey, effective January 1st, 2018. I move this ordinance to be passed at a second reading and advertised in Nutley Sun together with notice required by law that further consideration of said ordinance for the final passage of the Board of Commissioners to be held at its second reading on August 1st. I move the ordinance. Second. Commissioner Rogers? Aye. Commissioner Tucci? Aye. Commissioner Evans? Aye. Commissioner Petraco? Aye. Mayor Scarpelli? Aye. Ordinance number 3366, an ordinance to fix the salaries of certain officers and employees of Township in Nutley County of Essex State in New Jersey, effective January 1st, 2019. I move that this ordinance be passed for a second reading and advertised in the Nutley Sun together with the notice required by law and the further consideration of said ordinance for final passage by the Board of Commissioners to be held at its second reading on August 1st. I move the ordinance. Second. Commissioner Rogers. Aye. Commissioner Tucci. Aye. Commissioner Evans. Aye. Commissioner Petraco. Aye. Mayor Scarpelli. Aye. Ordinance number 3367, ordinance to fix the salaries of certain officers and employees of the township in Nolly County, Vesta State of New Jersey, 
effective January 1st, 2020. I move the, that this ordinance be passed to second reading and advertised in the Nutley Sun together with the notice required by law and that further consideration of said ordinance for final passage by the Board of Commissioners to be held at its second reading on August 1st. I move the ordinance. Second. Commissioner Rogers. Aye. Commissioner Tucci. Aye. Commissioner Evans. Aye. Commissioner Petraco. Aye. Mayor Scarpelli. Aye. Public hearings. Commissioner Petraco. Ordinance number 3359, an ordinance to amend an ordinance codified in the Code of the Township of Nulli, Chapter 228, titled and traffic, particularly Article 7, um, Section 29A, entitled Handicapped Parking, to, add the to the location thereon. Um, this is for a handicapped spot on Hope Street. I move to open the public hearing. Second. Commissioner Rogers. Aye. Commissioner Tucci. Aye. Commissioner Evans. Aye. Commissioner Petraco. Aye. Mayor Scarpelli. Aye. Would anybody like to be heard on ordinance number 3359? Seeing none, I move to close it on the public portion. Commissioner Rogers. Aye. Commissioner Tucci. Aye. Commissioner Evans. Aye. Commissioner Petraco. Aye. Mayor Scarpelli. Aye. That's all I have. Thank you. Move the ordinance. Oh, I'm sorry. Move the ordinance. Second. Commissioner Rogers. Aye. Commissioner Tucci. Aye. Commissioner Evans. Aye. Commissioner Petraco. Aye. Mayor Scarpelli. Aye. Resolutions. Commissioner Rogers. Yes. Resolution number 149-17. Resolution amending resolution number 279-16 for an agreement made between Northwest Essex Community Healthcare Network, a nonprofit corporation, herein referred to as the agency, having its principal place of business at 570 Belleville, Bel Belleville Avenue, Belleville, New Jersey, 07109, and the township of Nutley here and after referred to as Nutley. Whereas the agency has agreed and functioned in the past to provide behavioral health care for the residents of Nutley and will continue to provide said services in accordance with the terms and conditions of this agreement, and whereas Nutley has agreed to make annual grants of funds for the partial support and maintenance of the said services rendered by the agency to Nutley residents, and whereas it is hereby agreed that one, the agency will furnish and provide behavioral health care services to residents of Nutley by professionally qualified personnel and will cooperate with other Nutley community programs which deal with the provision of said services. Two, for services rendered by the agency and described heretofore during said contractual period of January 1st, 2017 through December 31st, 2017, Nutley agrees to pay the agency a grant in the amount of $15,000 three payments on account of the obligation set forth above shall be made annually to the agency no later than December 31st, 2017, the amount of $15,000 for the year. Four, in addition for the behavioral health care services already provided under the contract agreement, the agency will provide a therapist once a week to see veterans in need of therapy at the Department of Public Affairs Health, located at 149 Chestnut Street, Nutley, New Jersey. Payments on account of the obligation set forth above shall be made annually to the agency in the amount of $15,000 no later than December 31st, 2017. Whereas funds will be made available from account number 7-01-118-200 in the amount of $15,000 and will be certified by the Chief Financial Officer, said certification being attached subject to the adoption of the 2017 municipal budget. And now therefore be it resolved by the Board of Commissioners of the Township of Nutley County of Essex State of New Jersey that the mayor and township clerk be and they are hereby authorized to execute an agreement with Northwest Essex Community Health Care Network, be it further resolved that the parties here too have caused these, these presents to be executed by their respective mayor, officer, and attested to by their respective municipal clerk or secretary and their official seal to be fixed thereto, so moved. Second. Commissioner Rogers? Aye. Commissioner Tucci? Abstain. Commissioner Evans? Aye. Commissioner Petraco? Aye. Mayor Scarpelli? I, I'm also going to abstain. I, I, I don't know if I have a conflict, but I'm going to be on the safe side. Okay. Mayor, excuse me. We have to excuse ourselves. Mr. Petraco and I, we have a week to go to. All right. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you both. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Commissioner Evans? Thank you. Whereas NJSA 54519.1 authorizes electronic tax sales pursuant to 
rules and regulations promulgated by the Director of the Division of Local Government, Governmental Services, and whereas the Director of, uh, of the Division of Local Governmental Services has promulgated rules and regulations for pilot, pilot programs, whereas the Director has approved New Jersey Tax Lien Investor uh, Real Estate Auction.com to conduct pilot programs, whereas the rules and regulations authorize the municipalities to submit an application for participation in the pilot program for an electronic tax sale, whereas the, an electronic tax sale is innovative and provides a greater pool of potential lien buyers, thus creating the environment for a more complete tax sale process, whereas the Township of Nelly wishes to participate in the pilot program for an electronic uh, tax sale. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Board of Commissioners, the Township of Nelly County of Essex, New Jersey, that the tax collector is hereby authorized to complete an application to participate in the electronic tax sale program and submit same to the Director of the Division of Local Governmental Services. So move. Second. Commissioner Rogers. Aye. Commissioner Tucci. I'm no. sorry, Commissioner Evans. Aye. Mayor Scarpelli. Aye. Whereas there exists a need for a state-approved electronic tax sale system, and whereas the maximum amount of the contract is $7,000, whereas NJSA 54519.1C provides that a contract with a state-approved vendor may be awarded by informal quotation and without public bid. The contract excel itself is available for public inspection. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Board of Commissioners of the Township of Nutley County of Essex, uh, New Jersey, as follows. The Mayor and Township Clerk are hereby authorized and directed to execute an agreement with ROK Industries doing business as New Jersey Tax Lien Investors dot com for the services of electronic tax sale system for the total amount not to exceed seven thousand dollars in accordance with a proposal uh, dated uh, July 5th 2017 this contract is awarded without competitive bidding as authorized by NJSA 54519.1c notice of this action shall be printed once in Nutley Sun the legal newspaper of the township of Nutley so move second Commissioner Rogers? Aye. Commissioner Evans? Aye. Mayor Scarpelli? Aye. Thank you, Mayor. Be resolved by the Board of Commissioners of the Township of Nutley in the County of Essex State, New Jersey, that the Township Treasurer be, and she is hereby authorized to refund $55 to Denise Klozinski, 95 Reland Avenue, Nutley, New Jersey, for a refund of payment made to the Department of Public Works Go Green Initiative and move the resolution. Second. Commissioner Rogers? Aye. Commissioner Evans? Aye. Mayor Scarpelli. Aye. Whereas raffle applications have received from the following organizations, Nutley Parent Advocacy Network, license number 33-17, on-premise 50-50 cash raffle to be held Friday, October 13, 2017, and Nutley Parent Advocacy Network, license number 34-17, on-premise merchandise raffle to be held the same date, Friday, October 13, 2017, whereas the application has been reviewed and approved by the municipal clerk and the police department now therefore be resolved. By the Board of Commissioners, Township Nutley, County of Essex, State of New Jersey, that the aforementioned licenses are approved and the municipal clerk is authorized to issue the raffle license. I move the resolution. Second. Commissioner Rogers? Aye. Commissioner Evans? Aye. Mayor Scarpelli? Aye. That concludes the business portion of our meeting. Madam Clerk, will you please read the notice? Yes, Mayor. All, all persons addressing the Board of Commissioners regarding community concerns should approach the microphone and provide their name and address for the record. Unless further time is granted by the board, each person shall limit their address to five minutes. All remarks to the board and its individual members must be addressed to the mayor. The mayor may defer citizens' comments to the appropriate member of the board. Dialogue between citizens and others addressing the board shall be allowed unless the mayor or presiding officer or the majority of the membership of the board shall determine that the interest of the quorum and or the expeditious conduct of municipal business are being adversely affected by such dialogue. Would anybody like to address the board of commissioners this evening? Going on up to the mic, Screen Grove. Um, name is Dorothy Greengrove, and tonight I am representing the Historic Restoration Trust of Nutley, um, which is also known as the Kingsland Manor. Uh, as of April, um, I found out that we are no longer part of the town that is entitled to have alerts sent out for our, um, I went to see the 
Commissioner Tucci because our house is under his jurisdiction. And I was told that the decision was made by the entire commission. So that's why I'm here tonight, to find out what happened, why we can't have alerts sent any, out anymore for our events. Um, does anybody have any answers for me? Uh, Mr. Greengrove, I can tell you that the position of the board has been that uh, the alert system is reserved for the township and the departments to communicate with the residents. Um, you know, and, and opening it up to nonprofits is a slippery slope for us. Because I asked if we weren't part of the town, and I was told, well, kind of. What does that mean? Well, that, that I don't have the answer for, Mrs. Greenberg. So we're not going to have anything sent out anymore for our alerts? Or? As, as I said, uh, opening up the alert system to nonprofits is a very slippery slope for us because then everybody has access to that system. So we're, we are in agreement that it should be used um, for the township. Because we don't ask for much from the town as far as financial things. We do all our own advertising, we do all our own flyers, we do everything, so, you know. I think I've answered your question, Mrs. Greenwell. No answer. Okay. I, said, I said, I think I've answered your question. There were too many. Does that mean that we sent out too many? And what is too many? I don't, I don't believe I said too many, but... No, Mayor, you didn't. Um, just, may I add? Sure. The, in the construction of the new website, um, the initial construction was confined to the departments of the township. So the five uh, commission departments for departmental business. Uh, there is um, uh, a vehicle that's uh, potentially available to actually create a public uh, bulletin board where notices can be posted electronic. Uh, but there's quite a bit of work to be done to determine whether or not it's uh, really possible to do that, uh, what the fee structure would be associated with that. Uh, and it currently doesn't exist today, but it was something that has been under consideration, and yet um, we're just not there for that. And for things like uh, the not, all the not-for-profits and the organiza organizations in town, it, even businesses, it would provide a way for them to advertise or publish uh, events or things that are coming up. That ability just doesn't exist within the current system. And we do something with our television? besides just showing commission meetings and high school events. Every other town seems to have really nice websites or, you know, on the television yeah. that, is there any way that we could put our stuff onto that, something like that? I, I, I'm I talking know. about yeah. channel, was it 42? Well, well, certainly you could put announcements up there as far as television shows. I, I, I don't know the mechanism for doing that, if that would be through the, the school system. They, they really they really control that. We'll find out. We'll ask Mr. Kelly about that. Okay, thank you. Anybody else like to address the Board of Commissioners this evening? Rory Moore, 462 Chestnut Street. Mr. Scarpelli, I'd like to address the Board of Commissioners this evening. And I ask any questions, don't expect any answers, and I'm on a five minute rule. Rory has the clock. Last meeting, Mr. Mr. Rogers spoke in this response to me, I asked for Paul Capone to be fired for absolute incompetency, and Mr. Uh, Rogers obviously disagreed with that, which is okay. I thought it was. Mr. C uh, um, Rogers and I can disagree, that's quite all right. He said, I just don't understand how you praised Mr. Capone as a mentor. When the fire engine crashed, the fuel oil went into the river. And the EPA wasn't even called, and no attempt was to clean up the river, was, was even tried or attempted. When Mr. Cafone was interviewed by the prosecutor's office, his only concern was his son, not the two other individuals who were hurt in the truck. I'm moved by this because how you can think of him as a mentor, and last year Mr. Evans cited the Moody's report, and I had called Moody's up after Mr. Evans spoke of it. I talked to somebody on the, the, the team 
that did the evaluation for Nutley. Nutley was based on average annual taxable income of $125,000 per household, which clearly indicated the taxpayer worked pretty hard for what they got and for what they pay. And to have somebody sit here and absolutely think that you can just get in a fire truck and trash the fire truck for a million and a half dollars and nothing happens. Nobody is going to be held accountable or disciplined for wrecking a fire truck. But I think that's what we should do as mentors around here. Those are the kind of people we need leading the township in Nutley. The final report will be out very shortly. And I believe there might be tickets issued for that by the prosecutor's office, not by the Nutley Police Department. And I'm really amazed that nobody cares. That, that just absolutely mortifies me. Because if I have to work this hard to earn 125000 taxable income, then why don't you even think about what it might cost me, what I might have to do as a person to attain something of that stash. It must be, say, something as an individual who tries to have a better life, works a little bit harder, and then have Mr. Cofone sit here, hire his son, number 14 off the list, who couldn't care less whatever happened to the truck. We got plenty of money, we'll go out and we'll buy a new one. Well, it's about time things about that, that changed. I'm gonna write a letter, and you're gonna know I wrote it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Anybody else like to address the Board of Commissioners this evening? Michael Ogier, 133 High Street. And it's the reason why I'm here. I'm concerned. The night of this fire truck accident, from what I understand, there were two other firemen in that truck. I've never in my life, and I've been watching news since 1975, never seen a fire truck tip like that. Never. And my question is, after the accident, the person, now that I know the name of the person that was driving it, was he given a breathalyzer? or some kind of test to see if there was any form of intoxication. Because for a truck of that size to tip over, and I've never seen that in my life. I can understand an SUV going 80 on a 30 mile turn, tipping over, but how fast was he going? I just don't understand. But my question, do you know if, he was, if the gentleman was giving a breathalyzer or some test to see if he was intoxicated at the time of the accident, the driver. Because if he was, we don't know, that gentleman put those two other firefighters in jeopardy. And I'm sh I don't know what their personal lives are. Maybe they're parent fathers supporting children. But my question to you, was the gentleman given a breathalyzer? Or Mr. Audrey, Mr. Audrey, that, that uh, accident is under the investigation by the prosecutor's office. And that's all. I'll leave it at that. Okay, so you don't know anything. Correct. Just yes or no. I'll leave my answer at what I said, Mr. Ogier. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Mayor? Yes. If I may, if, if a matter is under, investigated by the, under investigation by the Essex County Prosecutor's Office, it would be inappropriate for anyone uh, involved with the commission to make any comment with regard to the investigation whether information is known, unknown, anything about it until the matter is released from the prosecutor's office. Thank you, Mr. Paris. John Kelly, 162 Peg Street. Uh, I'm just up here because Nelly Family Service Bureau was mentioned earlier, and I think uh, whether unintentionally or not, its value to this community was oversimplified. Yes, it does provide mental health services, and the people in this community sometimes desperately need those services. However, it provides services well beyond just mental health services. Importantly, it operates a food pantry. That food pantry goes to put food on the plate, on the table, for people in this community, not, not just people down in the street in Newark, people right here in our own backyard. And I know it's something that we, we may not want to talk about in, the, in this picturesque town, that there's people in this community who cannot afford to put food on the table. But you're, you're talking about, you say, what, $30,000 against the backdrop of, what, a, a $55 million appropriated bucket, a budget? That, that, that's, that's not going to save money for anyone. It, importantly, I know you said that it, it's not a government entity. It's a nonprofit. But we, we give money to countless independent contractors left and right for, for amounts far exceeding $30,000. And this, this organization provides a valuable service to this community 
by helping those in, in most need. And I, I urge you guys to reconsider and find a way to continue to fund this organization. And even if you have to cut something somewhere else, cut something somewhere else. But Nully Family Service Bureau provides a, a service that this organization, that this government doesn't provide. And that if the government isn't here to help the people, then I don't know what government is for. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Mr. Mayor, I also think it's necessary. Look, this was a difficult decision, but I did meet with people, I shouldn't say people, executives from the Nutley Family Service Bureau a couple of times, and they do a great job. They, they also service residents of Belleville, Bloomfield, Glen Ridge, and a few other communities around us. And I had asked the question, not only one time, but a few times, how much are those communities giving? to the Nutley Family Service Bureau. And I've got to tell you, I have an issue with the fact that Nutley taxpayers are always asking to go into their pockets and pay for everybody else. And I think that, I, I believe me, I, I've been around here for a long time, and that agency is one of the best in the state. But I think there has to be some fairness. And if it's servicing other communities, then maybe some of those other communities should kick in. And I've got to tell you, there are some members on the board who agree with me. And the fact of the matter is, is that those of us who are sitting in these seats have a very difficult task. And I've said over and over again that, you know, we're faced with some difficult times ahead. And no one wants to cut services. No one wants to cut money from agencies that are doing a good job. Well, what do I tell the taxpayers? What do I say to the taxpayers that come here, and some of them are sitting here tonight, saying over and over and over again that we need to find ways to save tax dollars? So this was a way, and believe me, a lot of this is painful for anybody. Very painful. It's not easy sitting up, facing some of the, the, the problems that we have in town, whether it be homeless or those in need of food, etc and have to cut funding. It's not easy, but we found ways to fill the gap. And we're going to fill those gaps. We have a very resourceful town. We have churches that are very involved in, in feeding the uh, people who need food and, and housing them. We have a lot of different things going on in this town that a lot of people don't know about. And that's not going to be the last cut. There are going to be many, many more down the road, and it's going to be painful. But I have a job. And that job is to look out for the taxpayers to the best of my ability. Look, sometimes I fail, sometimes I succeed. But I can only make decisions based on what I believe is for the common good of every single taxpayer in this town. So I just want you to know that decisions like this are not easy. They're not easy. They're very difficult. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner. Mr. Lesio. Yeah, Carmine Alessio, 81 East Center Street. I, I hope Mr. Tucci is all right, because I got to jump on what he had mentioned about the, um, the Glassback Park receiving funds from a state entity in regards to re-turfing the, the facility over there, that park. So I was going to kind of like sit back and not, but I'm jumping on this, because I... I, I don't know how you can go in partnership with somebody just on a, uh, like, just, just by talking. Because I did a follow-up on uh, Monsignor Owens from day one, from when the Parks, the Nutley Parks Department went into partnership with um, Green Acres to um, renovate the Monsignor Owens field over there. And, um, I, I just happen to, I, my family's been in town since the 1920s, so I honestly picked up the phone and said to um, Green Acres, I, I don't understand how you can go in partnership when there's certain issues with that park that they're not in compliance with state laws. And there was a list of them. I said, can you check this out? Can you check that out? meaning can you check out handicap accessibility, can you check out the parking, can you check out um, access to the park, 
Um, check it out, please. Um, I understood that it was open, declared open space from day one, and I always thought it, knew it was open space. It was on the books until uh, um, 2015 um, when it was listed as open space. Okay. So, you know, I, I, I kind of like kept in touch with, with the state because I actually seen East Center Street fall, fall apart. It used to be our manufacturing district and um, people non-conforming, so they say, like the houses don't belong there. I don't believe that. But anyway, we happen to be there since the 1920s. Now, this park was not in compliance. There was a certain string of employees there. There was a list like seven or eight, like deep, with um, um, things that didn't conform or weren't, were out of compliance, were not complying with the state law. Now, I just stuck with it because the density, because of all of these apartments that are going all over the place, like I would say, Ten times more the amount of density. And I can remember 30 years ago coming to this meeting, which I never saw any one of you commissioners at these meetings from 30 years ago. It's when you guys got in office that I see you here. I've been coming to these meetings, and I went to toe-to-toe -to -toe with Frank Cacciola asking him, why are you dumping down where that park is supposed to be a, par, a, a, a section for parking cars. Never answered the question, okay? I don't know, I mean, why he couldn't, why they were dumping there. Like, people are trying to live and, and, and stop, like, rodents and all of that Vernum stuff and watch out for their property. And I'm one of them. I felt that I have a right to come here and say, hey, look, you know, that's designated park area. That's open space. And he never answered my question. But yet, Mr. Cacciola's name is on the Parks Department building. Mr. Cacciola, you have to, something has to warrant having your name on a building. Okay? And I want to stick to my neck of the woods, but when there was the creative playground, I'm sure people in that section up there weren't happy with the rats coming from the brook, and it just went into shambles. Okay? I lived, the, lived it, lived through down there. Now, I wanted to ask Mr. Tucci, maybe he can answer this question another time. Five years have gone by since... 2012, when we went into partnership with Green Acres, okay, we received 183,000 until all the commotion came about when I picked up the phone. Now, I'm, I'm closing out on this, okay, please. It takes a lot to come up here and spill your guts out. But anyway, we got a loan for 410000 We have a balance of 150000 that hasn't been paid until my last call was maybe two weeks ago, so I don't know. The, it went to restitution with Jenna Tempo, and all the lawyers go there. Like, who pays for that? Who's paying for all of this stuff here that we have to go to? As far as I know, the story changes. Now it's not open space up until September 14, 2015. It's not conservation um, land. Like, you, you know, they throw, they throw things around. And then, to boot, which really got me aggravated, is when I got a referendum um, stationary from the state to preserve open space. I mean, like, I felt like somebody really, a, a donkey wrapped me in the butt. R wrap okay. it up, Mr. Lossian. I mean, could somebody answer this eventually? I mean, I, I wanted to face him, but it, 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 this all started, it made my head click about 15 minutes ago when he mentioned getting grant money from a state entity for Glossback Park, when we can't even take care of what we, 
Where's this, how do you balance a budget when you owe 150000 from five years ago? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Evening. Alessio. Appreciate it. Anybody else want to address the Board of Commissioners this evening? Hello, how are you? Jamie Molinaro, 214 Stratford Drive. I just have a bit of a question to continue on what Mrs. Greenrobe had asked before. I volunteer for Kingsland Manor, um, specifically for events that we throw to bring all, the whole town together in lots of fun things, such as the baseball game where you threw the first pitch out for us. Just out of curiosity, you mentioned us being a nonprofit. Are we designated then as a nonprofit, or do we still fall under Parks and Rec? I don't have an answer to that, to tell you the truth. Do you know how I can find one? I think we can get back to you on that. Okay. Anybody else want to address the Board of Commissioners this evening? Seeing none, make a motion to close. Need a second? Second. Commissioner Rogers? Aye. Commissioner Evans? Aye. Commissioner Scarpelli? Aye. Ma Sorry, Mayor Scarpelli? Aye. Thank you, and the time is 8.40. Good night, everybody.